you are always in service and we are always uh, uh, helping you with it. We try to assist you in any circumstance. Today I was thinking, Gurudev, what is the secret of a good Zoom class? What is the secret? And there is no big secret. It's only how to create loving feelings, isn't it, Gurudev? How to be in love and how to share love. That is why we come together and that's why we meet. That's what we want to learn, what we want to feel and to increase. So because I am also a very romantic person and I guess Srimati Radhika is the most romantic person in the whole world, in the whole universe. Huh? You are romantic. Yes. <laughs> you are Radha Dasi. <laughs> they are all romantic. <laughs> Very romantic. So I thought uh, this verse number 90 is so beautiful. It's about the romance of how to learn romantic poetry from Shimate Radhika. And I was singing a little bit of the of the Sanskrit and the first word is yachita and it means begging begging for the mercy oh Devi when will I shyly lower my head in the assembly as you are requested they say requested but it is actually begging. They translate the word yachita by requested, but it's a begging. It's a loving begging. Oh, will you please? By Lalita Devi to lovingly read some beautiful romantic poetry to me. That is so beautiful. We might ask ourselves why Shrimati Radhika is not herself saying this poetry or why she not just start but she uses Lalita because Lalita is her expansion of determination. She is the one that has the power to say, okay, let's do it. Lalita Devi is requesting but here also it says begging it's like a playful begging oh let's you know hear some poetry can you teach your tulsi devi your tulsi dasi your maid servant some romantic romantic poetry and what is the dasi doing she is shyly lowering her head because she knows oh that is such a blessing I don't feel so qualified. Oh, it's like when Lalita says something, it's an order. That's why they say requesting here, I guess, Gurudev, because Lalita is very strong. I will read the purport now. In the previous verse, Tulasi learned singing from Swamini. And in this verse, she wants to learn Rasika poetry from her. Swamini molds Tulasi, molds heist Foreman, molds Tulasi as she wants it. She will serve her Priyatam through this maidservant and thus make him happy. And at the same time, she blesses her maidservant with devotional service. So this is a, such a very romantic combination, I feel. So it's coming from both sides, you know. We have always learned Gurudev Rag and Anurag. It's the, you know, desire of the maidservant, but also the desire of Swamini. And she is expressing this desire through Lalita. That's how sweet it goes in the spiritual relationships. Nothing is always so directly. Everything comes like 
around the corner like a snake it is never going straight but it goes you know straight i mean it is gliding so that's why i like when baba is expressing that swamini molds to lassi as she wants it lalita is begging for this you know she says wouldn't you like to teach to lassi some rasika poetry why is she begging because also for the for the girlfriends who are older it's very uh, charming to listen to that because they usually don't get to listen to swamini's poet poetry that much in the same extent as the maid servants do that's why actually the word is begging lalita is asking very humbly also although she is in a way the boss she is the one who says oh swamini now you need to be a little bit more in man with mohan he didn't do it right and then even if swamini's heart is already molded and lalita doesn't agree she cannot stop him on so in the same way when lalita is asking or begging swamini for some poetry to teach of all the dasis to her then she cannot uh, say no and at the same time it is also swamini's desire and it is also to lassi's desire and of course it's also desire of all the girls who are with them like lalita and vishaka and you know indulekha chitra champakalata who knows who is around and they are all very very eager to listen to swamini's rasika poetry like now we are listening to the poetic poetic words of raghunath das goswami and raghunath das goswami was so eager to listen to the rasika poetry of rupa goswami of sanatana goswami he was so eager he was so he could not wait they were just writing down everything for the future generations to come but raghunath das goswami was always eager to listen to the rasika poetry of his guru manjari and that's why also his poetry became so super super excellent and sweet because all of his moods all of his bhavas all of his feelings he got them from his guru manjari and so in his meditations we hear often how they are so close they are like in a very deep oneness of feelings and they don't feel shy before each other they are very friendly they are very close so when raghunath das goswami in his siddha swarup in his feelings as a manjari is expressing his vilapakush mandali it is always in in very divine closeness to his guru mandari and so we can also feel that in this uh, assembly also rupa mandari will be present and she is very proud of her disciple of her friend tulasi mandari when she mati radhika is requesting through lalite to i want to teach you some rasika poetry today and that is a special poetry because with that poetry when the right time and the right moment is there you will make my priyatam very happy and that is the whole reason why everything is being done and being said and being felt to make mohan very much more attracted to swamini 
Swamini molds Tulasi as she wants it. You know, molding is like when you have some soft material like a dough and you can make cookies and you can make the form that you want. You can make them round, you can make them oval, you can make little squares or you can take a, you know, heart shape shape, uh, you know, devices to make different, different forms. And so it is expressed, and I like this expression very much, that Swamini molds to Lassi. She is giving her all expertise, all words, and all feelings that can be used in the service at the appropriate time. She will serve her Priyatam through this maidservant. Srimati Radhika is never separated from the desire to serve her beloved in any circumstances, with any uh, arrangement, with all of her dasis. She only has one desire in mind, to make her beloved Mohan very satisfied. And at the same time, she blesses her maidservant with devotional service. So, we see there's no separation between the two results of what Swamini's desire will bring about. On the one hand, it will make Mohan happy. And on the other hand, it is blessing the maidservant. And I want to add, because we are in an assembly here in this beautiful scene, also blessing all other Dasis, the bigger one and the smaller one, who are around. It's an assembly. And uh, to Lassi Mandri, the Dasis feel very shy, because they are personification of uh, sweetness and shyness. And they are very uh, confidentially trained by Swamini. And usually this training goes from one to one. Because we know they sometimes go in the caves of Govardhan, or they go in a hidden kunj, and then they get to learn all these confidential services. But here it is even in an assembly that some romantic poetry will be heard from Swamini's lips by the begging and by the request of Laliti. So all are blessed because, as we will we'll continue to hear, Shimati Radhika is the container, the Rasa Sar, the divine container of all divine flavors. She is the origin of all the flavors that will make Mohan so very happy. And now she will open some of that to teach to her Dasi so that she can repeat it and lovingly uh, remember these divine poetries in the moments when they are needed. Shri Ishvari Shikshi Tashesha Kala Kaushalya Shalinim. The maidservants know innumerable arts through the training of their Shri Ishvari. They also relish the love of the Sakis. The leader of all the Sakis, Lalita Devi, asks Radhika, Saki, read some divine Rasika poetry to Tulasi. Train her just as you like. So Swamini teaches Tulasi some poetry that she can later at a proper moment expertly recite to the Yuga Lakishore who are fond 
of good poetry. Fond means they love good poetry. They are romance themselves. They are the personification of divine flavors of romance, of everything that we could ever imagine would be romantic and very heart touching and very heart melting. That is the divine couple, our Radha Mohan. And in this case, Swamini is teaching the Dasis how to say some very beautiful poems and recite some beautiful words at the proper moment. There are so many services for which poetry must be learned. So poetry is not only when everyone is sitting together and having a romantic picnic. There are many services. And now Baba is explaining. Sri Yugala goes rambling in the forest, walking. Van Vihar Leela. Not only does the maidservant soften their pathway by strewing flowers, but she also immerses Shyam in an boundless ocean of bliss by singing self-made songs to him about Swamini's glories. So he had also explained the maidservant they are throwing or covering the beautiful forest which is already shining with the golden moon and with the dark blue sky. And the pathway is already shining so beautifully. But the maidservant is uh, throwing more beautiful petals on the way so that the Radha and Mohan can walk with their soft feet on very soft petals of flowers. And at the same time, the maidservant is singing to infuse more romance in their hearts, to increase their desire for each other. In this way, the maidservant gives all comfort to their beloved Radha Mohan and is increasing their feelings and making the moment of that beautiful Van Vihar, that forest uh, walk, even more beautiful. That is why we say we are so romantic because Gurudev said the Dasis, they are so, they are only made from romance. They always want to, to help to bring Radha Mohan together. And if they are not together, then they will find any, any, any way how to increase the betterment of the source, of the separation. They want to help that they will not feel separation. And when Swamini is in separation, also they will give her the memories of these beautiful moments when they were together, maybe also singing to her singing or speaking and expressing all the feelings of their hearts which they have kept on the canvases of their heart, in the hidden chambers of their hearts. And when the moment is appropriate, they can also help Swamini to overcome the separation by singing songs or by uh, reciting some nice poetry that she will remember the times when they were together. And then when she remembers that, she also becomes again more happy in being together with Moha. Not only does the maidservant soften their pathway by strewing flowers, but she also immerses Shyam in a boundless ocean of bliss by singing self-made songs to him about Swamini's glories. 
See, also the maidservant is not singing any songs, but the songs of Swamini, of her beauty, of her cleverness, of her shyness, and of her expertise in satisfying her Mohan to make the atmosphere more romantic. O oh, Swamini, when you are rambling in the forest, I will glorify you with songs. I will make the path over which you walk soft and fragrant by scattering flowers. And together with your girlfriends, I will shower flowers in all directions and at every step. So here we see it's a softness that is so beautiful for the feet, the softness of the petals and also the fragrance. We can feel here is, you know, the touch of the feet is so soft and the nose is smelling these beautiful rose uh, aromas. And then also the ears are hearing the beautiful songs. So all the divine senses are inspired. There comes now um, a very beautiful quote of Sankalpa Kalpatrum by Vishwana Chakavati Thakur. While your lover decorates you with handmade floral necklaces, sashes, armlets, earrings and crowns, I will again adorn you with flower-like self-made poems and I will also make your Rasika Sakis relish that poetry. That is now another situation. Krishna is now decorating Shimati Radhika with floral necklaces earrings and crowns and I will again adorn you with flower-like self-made poems. So also at that moment uh, the Dasi is singing. The Dasi is also singing when Mohan is decorated Shimatera, decorating Shimati Radhika. And everyone can relish that poetry. The kinkaris know the desires on the minds of the Yuga Laka shore and they serve them accordingly by reading the appropriate Rasika poetry to them. So here also we hear they are singing, they are reading. There is unlimited services that can be done with that desire to increase the feelings of the Yuga of Radhika and her beloved Mohan. To Lassi thinks, how many maidservants don't you have? Why are you asking me this in particular? She feels very shy. She feels also very blessed. And she says, you have so many maidservants, but why are you asking me now? Maybe she even feels others are more qualified. Others can do it better than me. But it is a mercy. It is a mercy that she gets. So when Gurudev is asking us something, read or sing. It is a mercy. We should never say no. Don't reject the mercy that comes. The more one experiences Swamini's mercy, the more one Swarup will awaken. 
So whenever there is a moment when some chance comes for service, we would never reject it because we feel it is Swamini's mercy that she is giving me the opportunity now. I never say no. I say yes. I am shy with a lowered head. But the mercy will connect me with my Swarup. So when Gurudev is giving an order, it is like the expansion of Swamini. Like the maidservant of Swamini is giving an order to do that service. So I can feel blessed that this mercy is coming. And the more I can feel that, the more the Swarup, the feeling to be a Dasi will be alive. It will be real. It will be there. It will be natural. But Baba says, unfortunately, my Swarup is sleeping. I am, I, I am being lullabied by external affairs. You know, a lullab lullaby is when you are bringing children to sleep. And usually children are a little bit restless at the time to going to sleep. They are still in their games and in their talks, and they say many things. But here Baba gives this example. Because I identify with so many external things in my human uh, identity, it's a, it's a sleeping thing with my Swarup. I don't always consciously connect and naturally connect to it. Maybe it is only a theory. The mind is thinking. But actually, when we are hearing this and reading this, why we are doing it? So it becomes alive. And the feeling becomes closer and closer and closer so that in everyday affairs, we can always remember our services and our, you know, eternal position, our name. Our color, our melody, the heart's melodies that will remind us who we are and who we want to always feel that is myself in my constitutional position. So not to sleep, but to be awake, to be aware, to be conscious, to be begging for that mercy. And here Baba then says, even if I could spend the day thinking I am Sri Radha's maidservant, it could be attained. If I can only spend one day not forgetting it, it could be close. It could be there. It could be a reality. See how much hope we are getting here. He doesn't say it is lifetimes away. He says, yes, I'm sleeping in my external affairs. I'm going to sleep, not in the night. I'm going to sleep during the day <laughs> when I am in external consciousness. But if I only think all day long, I am Dasi, and everything that comes today will be my service, will be Swamini's and Guru Devi's hint, well, that is already being alive. Let's practice that. Let's try that again and again and again. And now Swamini calls to Lassi. To Lassi, won't you read? Now she gives us something to read, poetry. From now on, you should come every day for learning poetry from me. Swamini is so happy when the, when the maidservant is eager to do service. She is giving her again and again some service. 
-hmm. She says, every day now you can come and read. And the maidservant is very shy and she really thinks, my God, how can this happen? But Swamini is so happy when the maidservant, who is loving Swamini so much, so much more than her own life, and she is very, very um, inspired and feels a, a lot of love for her maidservant. And she has written these poems herself. Rade, Rade, someone has the mic on. That sound is coming. Can you check yourself? Thank you. So Swamini has written these poems herself and about herself. Because Divya Ra's divine flavors are nowhere else but in her. So that is beautiful, isn't it? Mati Radhika is writing poems about herself and she is sharing these poems with her maidservants. And the maidservants, when they recite these poems, they can even give more <laughs> ecstasy to Swami and Mohan than if, if, if Srimati Radhika cannot express this herself. She cannot like uh, glorify herself in front of Mohan. She needs her maidservants to ex express her Rasika feelings. She is using her maidservants to express the Rasika feelings. She, she, Radha Madhava are the divine hero and the divine heroine, and their pastimes are called Divya Ras. Again, this name, Divya Ras, divine flavors. And there is no poetry as Rasika as this. The authors of the scriptures on transcendental rasa and bhakti rasa consider the rasa which is aimed at in mundane uh, poetry to be the products of materialistic minds. And therefore, consisting of the three modes of material nature or maya. So we also know Yuka these. Uh, Hodak, please check your mic. Rade, Rade? What? Luca Hodak, check your mic, please. Acha, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rade, Rade, Gorabani, you also there. Please check also your mic and say something. <laughs> <laughs> so, here, Baba is now giving us this um, example that we have also in our human society, we have also um, romantic poetry. But this is coming from the minds that are in the three modes of material nature or maya, means they are covered by illusion. But Srimati Radhika's uh, uh, flavors of love are called divyaras. They are divine flavors. They are not uh, contaminated by the mode of passion, of desire that is aiming for my self-satisfaction. I want to have you because I need you. You are my trophy. <laughs> In material romance, it is often like that. Somebody wants someone because they think, oh, that will look good if this and that person will be mine. But Shimati Radhika is not like that. She always wants to make Mohan happy. And Mohan wants to make her happy. They are competing. They have a competition. How to make each other more happy. In divine flavors of love. That is free of any uh, selfish desire or mundane uh, how do you say that? 
mundane calculation. Yes, nowadays in these times of Kali Yuga, especially a lot of mundane calculation we can see in the romantic affairs. You know, if you are not doing what I like, then you can get lost and this and that. But Shimati Radhika has the divine flavors of unlimited Divyaras in her mind, in her heart. It's her nature. She only wants to make him happy and she doesn't even care about herself. Now when Sachinandan Bai was here, we were reading that song that I like so much and we were singing uh, many years ago. It's so beautiful. It's called Soy. Ke basho nailo shyamana. And I was always so in love with that, with that song, because it is so beautiful how Shimati Radhika is singing this in the mood of Purvarag. For me, she is singing it in the mood of Purvarag. Purvarag. And she is uh, in this mood that she is explaining to her friend, Oh, my dear friend, who has made me hear the name Shyam? So, keba so nilo shamanam. You remember that time when she is so young and she doesn't really know that it's only one person? He thinks that the flute player and the boy in the picture and the uh, person with the name Shyam. He thinks, she thinks they are three different persons and that she is a very bad person, that she fell in love with three boys. She's very, very um, unhappy about herself. And that song is so beautiful because here she is expressing how that name of Shyam is entering her heart through the ears and this is giving her a great agitation. And then she doesn't even know that this Shyam is the same person that plays the flute and the same person that is hanging in the picture of on the wall. So these songs, they are so beautiful because somehow they are giving some rasa, some feelings of Srimati Radhika's heart that is so pure the most purest heart in existence. Do you remember, Gurdiv, how we were playing that song? So, ke basu nailo shyamanam. That is a song by Chandidas. And then I, I, I understand now by your mercy, Gurdiv, that this song was... Uh, uh, sung to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because he always liked the songs of uh, Chandidas because then he could come in Radha Bath. So I, at this moment, Guru when uh, uh, Shachi was here again and we were again singing the song, I realized it's uh, it's Vamini herself saying these words, and she feels, oh my God, ah. Uh, who has made me hear the name? My dear friend, she's telling to a friend. I don't know how much sweetness fills this name of Shyam, for my tongue cannot leave it. And she becomes very much distressed because she fell, she just fell in love and she is now don't know what's happening to her. Japite japite nama avasha kuri logo. As I go on repeating this name, I lose control of myself. Oh, Saki, how shall I ever be able to meet him? And so, by your mercy, Gurudev, in that song, 
now so many new realizations came after singing it for i don't know i haven't sung it for here for years or didn't uh hear it for years but now when such a nanan bai was here then i grab the chance and i i understand also good if the development of the feelings of the songs it takes some time for deeper and deeper realizations so shimate radhika is expressing her feelings to her friends that she is a little bit afraid of this boy because she says if his name has the power to put me in such a condition what will happen at the touch of his body she is in povarag she is a uh, thinking of how and what to do how she is a little bit afraid but at the same time she really wants to meet that boy and in my heart she says i want to forget him but my memories do not leave me what shall i do what will be the remedy what will be the mess medicine i'm just quoting this because it is so beautiful and it gives so much relish to feel that how she mati radhika is feeling when she is in her povara but of course now coming back back to the text she is the reservoir of all divine flavors and that's why all different feelings of all different meetings and all different levels of their relationship are in her all the time simultaneously also so but here we can see also that uh, the romantic poetry is already being sung and heard in that moment when they have uh, a strong relationship and they have to be sung in different different moments when they meet so shimati radhika at this time in this moment in this leela is not afraid of meeting him she wants to meet him and she wants to make him happy with her dasis with her maid servants who will do all the services that are required at different different moments in different different circumstances anybody would like to add on this goravani ji if i am um, i have to change my i don't know who is there please anybody just add on radhe radhe actually i was hanging on the on one word which is coming so often here poetry why poetry is needed actually if you want to have gyan you don't need any poetry you can say in the scriptures it's like that and we just say it exactly like that again but then you will never understand raga because in raga no one has the same relationship with even the same person like my relationship with radha is completely different then your relationship with radha and gurudev's relationship with radha and all other devotees here they have a perfect individual relationship without poetry radharani cannot talk in groups and address everyone at the same time like sakis have a different mood but sometimes they are there and sometimes a song is addressing all together in different moods so poetry is needed because poetry is the language of feelings and can express different kind of feelings in one sentence so it doesn't need 100 million different explanations angles so poetry is the base for parakia 
Parakya bhav you cannot express without poetry. So sometimes when people have the mood of teachers and they want to actually talk about raga, then they cannot transport their feelings. And then it gets more dry. So we need this poetry to express feelings, our feelings, and of course much more it's needed for the feelings between Radha and her beloved, because these are secret affairs. They have to use this poetry, which has so many meanings in one word. So for me, it's very important to understand actually why poetry and love songs are also poetry in, in tunes. So why it is needed? Because otherwise we cannot connect in feelings. Exchange of raga has to be with feelings. And feelings has to be transported. And that's why poetry is so important here. This was a point which I was actually thinking about, so I wanted to share with you. Thank you very much. Jai Shri Radha. So very beautiful, Gauravani, what you are saying. Even Mahaprabhu always Personally, he's singing, Ramandaya singing, Swarpa Damodara is singing. And uh, I feel poetry and song is very connected. And how to express, express their feeling. Because without feeling, this Raga Bhakti or Radhika's Raga, Mohan's Raga cannot understand, understood. So, why Mahaprabhu later pastime, Ante Arira, he stay in Gambira, one very tiny small room and uh, very intimate servant, only a few servants discussed and exchanged the feeling. Like Swarpa Damodara, Raman Rai, they could know how, which feeling Mahaprabhu is, which Radha's feeling. So, and according to feeling, Swarpa Damodara could understand Mahaprabhu's feeling. And then, accordingly, he song, he song, he sings a song. And also, Ramandaya, he also sometimes create very, very intimate song. Sometimes describes Prema Biras Vivarta. And the Mahaprabhu is completely amazing. Because no one, nobody can say, nobody could understand this divine uh, Divya Rasa. So Gorabani uh, is a point how feeling is important. And Suniti is singing so beautifully how this song, Chandidas or etc. song uh, uh, express the feeling of Srimati Radhika. Or sometimes Gopi is feeling. This is, uh, I'm really appreciate Radhe Radhe.
Thank you all. And I always appreciate, Gurudev, when you are sitting in front of Vada Mohan and there are some Rasika Kirtaniyas, and when they sing their songs, then you go in deep trance because they transfer also so many feelings to their songs. And we know in Mungiraj Mandir that often we have these Kirtaniyas who are from Bengal. But of course, Gurdiv, you appreciate all the diff different devotees in their feelings, expressing feelings through the songs. Actually, we are always connecting, right, Gurdiv, to the Mahajans, like especially our Nara Tamdas Thakur, who you love so much, Gurdiv. And you always explain to us again and again that Gauranga Boliti Habe Pulaka Sharira Hari Hari Boliti Nayane Babi Nira. When will be that day when the tears are flowing? When I chant the name Gauranga. That day will come when I feel Swamini in Gauranga. That day will come when I feel how Swamini and Mohan are there together and embracing and always exchanging their sweet love. And Gauranga Mahaprabhu came to give that sweet, sweet, sweet flavors of divine relationship. And we are now so lucky that we can enter, that we can hear about them. That is in itself already the highest poetry. Vamini uses the name of another hero and heroine in her romantic poems and reads them to her maidservant, to Lassie, knowing her to be her closest confidant, her closest trustworthy person. She will not keep anything hidden in them, and she feels very happy while revealing these secrets to her maidservants. While Sriman Mahaprabhu danced before the cart of Lord Jagannath during the Ratha Yatra at Puri, he sang the verse, Ya Kaumara Hara Saevahi Vara from the Kavya Prakash about a mundane hero and heroine. This is from Chaitanya Chaitamrita Madhya 13. No one else but Sri Swarup Damodar could understand the transcendental meaning of Bhagavad Ras, the Lord found in this verse. That's such a wonderful example for that, isn't it? No yes. one else could understand because you have to understand the mood. If you don't understand the mood, how you can understand the poetry. And with the poetry, the mood is actually transported. Like with words, we also transfer a feeling actually. We may speak about the weather like Gurudev, maybe he speaks about some technical things, but actually the vibe, because he is in his seva and he's doing it for Radharani, the vibration is seva rasa to Radharani. So he may speak about some machine, 
some practical things, some technical things, but actually what is coming through is pure rasa. And I think this is the wonderful thing about poetry. If it's if someone else is in the same mood and you are in the mood, you can talk about the weather, but the other one will understand what you mean. That's why Radharani cannot hide anything, not even the slightest thing from her kinkaris, because the kinkaris are because of Radharani's mercy completely in the same mood. And they immediately feel what Radharani is talking about. Like here, the singing of this song of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Rupa understands immediately. Yeah. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was singing this in front of Lord Jagannath, Rupa Goswami heard this from the Lord's divine mouth. He understood the Lord's inner bath and revealed it by writing the verse, Priya, so yam Krishna, he is my beloved Krishna. And when the Lord found this verse on a palm leaf on the roof of Haridas Thakur's cottage, he asked Sri Rupa, Mora shlokera abhi prai na jane kon jane? Mora mane rakatta tumi jani le komyane? E to boli tare bahu prasada koriya svaro pago saire shloka Dekailo loya. Svarupe pochena prabu. Hoya vishvita. Mora manera kata. Rupa. Jana li. Jani lo ke mate. He was so much astonished and he expressed it. He said, No one could understand the meaning of my verse. How did you know the feelings of my mind? Saying this, he bestowed great mercy upon Sri Rupa and showed the verse to Swarup Damoda. In amazement, the Lord asked Swarup, How did Rupa know what was on my mind? Because also Lord Chaitanya was hiding it. But he was in the mood of Srimati Radhika, singing to be her beloved Mohan, singing about the love that she has for him and wanting to bring him to Vrindavan. That is the whole deepest meaning of Dharatha Yatra. How Srimati Radhika as Chaitanya wants to bring Lord Jagannath to Vrindavan to the mood that they had in the sweet forests of Vrindavan. And Swarup Damoda replied, I know that only someone who has received your grace can know what is on your mind. So that is also so sweet. Why? Because it reminds us that everything that happens is grace. It's Guru's grace. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's grace. Radhika's grace. If anything comes, any little uh, feeling, any little realization, it is mercy. It is given. It is received. It's not my doing. It's only my praying. And Rupa Goswami, he was... The mercy uh, container of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was giving all his feelings to reveal through him. Because then he was writing it all down in different, different ways, in songs, in prayers, in uh, shlokas. And it was all drenched in the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu being Shimati Radhika or being Krishna experiencing Shimati Radhika's Mahabhav. And just now I remember that verse 85, Gurudev, that we had, uh, I think, maybe two months ago, that you were revealing also through Gora Sundara that uh, it's not only that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was tasting Mahabhav, it's not only that he had the glimpse, he had to become that Mahabhav. And in that feeling, he was speaking or singing that verse in front of Lord Jagannath. And his beautiful, smallest disciple, Rupa Goswami, he was catching it. He was feeling it. Because, why? Because she is the Dasi of Srimati Radhika. She can feel her moods, her baths, all her tears, everything. Her joy and her sorrow. And that's why he was writing it on the palm leaf. And that's why when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw it, he was so happy, actually. He was just disguising his happiness by being amazed. But Swarup Damada said, He has received your grace. And that's why he can know what's on your mind. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I am satisfied with him, Sri Rupa. Sri Rupa. She is the form, the embodiment of all the feelings of Sri Matirani. That's why her name is Rupa Manjari. She can express it, not only by her beautiful divine form, but also when he came as Rupa Goswami, he gave a form, in form of letters, in form of songs, in form of slokas, in form of books, so that we can access it nowadays in our in our beings, we can now also absorb it. Because at that time, everything was transferred by, by uh, spoken words. Nobody so much was writing it down. That's why they were writing on these palm leaves, you know. There were not even paper or anything at that time yet. There was not even a pen. Palm leaves. These were... Uh, trees, the palm leaves of the palm trees. And that's how they write it down, to give it form, to leave that form for us, to leave that form of love, that form of rasa. So we can, we can also become abhidea. We can also go out of our human identities and take on spiritual forms. And Raghunath Das Goswami was giving that form to his prayers, the form of love that he got from his Gurudev, from his Guru Manjari. And he was giving it the last, you know, Revelation, how to be in Prem Prayujan, how to be in the mood, in the feelings of the sweetest, sweetest manjaris that assist Shrimati Radhika in whatever way she wants to be, making, you know, be assisted in making Mohan more happy. So that is the revelation. And that's why it is so, so, so beautiful that this poesy is giving form by sound, but also by letters. And it's very, very romantic. And only someone who is so close to Shrimati Radhika, to uh, 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu can catch it, can take the drops of nectar, the remnants, and give it even more form for all of others who also cannot maybe catch it like us. We could not have gotten it. How could we have gotten it? We were not even there. And there were many, many, many who could not even also catch it. But by the mercy of Chaitanya, who can make everyone conscious, by the mercy of Rupa Goswami, who has this service to give that form, and Raghunath Das Goswami, who gives that rag that he has given, been given by his Guru Manjai, Rupa Manjai. We can take some drops of that. We are so lucky. So Lord Chaitanya embraced Sri Rupa and empowered him completely, saying, He is qualified to understand the confidential rasa. Tell him everything about the glories of these confidential flavors. Rade, rade. I was just feeling that actually when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is hugging him and in this moment telling he is qualified to understand, in this moment he gets the mercy and that's the qualification. It's the full mercy, the hugging, the completely you are mine and I am yours. So now get all information. Now you are qualified. Now you've got the mercy. So this is the qualification we got from Gurudev when he was hugging us, taking us and offering us to Swamini's lotus feet. This is our qualification. No other qualification need. Not even possible. Gurudev, would you like to share on this? Please give us your mercy. <laughs> Nobody there to open the mic? We cannot hear you. Go on. Gurudev's mic is closed. We can yeah. see that he was talking, but we could not hear. Is there anybody there who could help? No, nobody's there. Only one Gurudev says I'm only one. Oh, Gurudev, I want to jump in. <laughs> That's unbelievable. <laughs> so Swarup Damada replied, I know that only someone who has received your grace can know what is on your mind. The Lord said, I'm satisfied with him, with Sri Rupa. He embraced Sri Rupa and empowered him completely, empowered him with his hugging, embrace with his, oh, and said he is qualified to understand the confidential rasa, the confidential poetry, the feelings, and that romantic love between Radha and Krishna. Tell by. Baba, says Gaurasunda, and tell him everything about the glories of these confidential flavors. So he opened the gate by, you know, blessing Rupa that all, all devotees should also uh, share and open their own realizations. So they also expressed each other's feelings like we are doing here. And then everyone can... Uh, take something of that home and feel more what is coming to them. These Rupa and Tulasi from Bracha are here in Gaura Lila, Rupa and Raguna, Tasko Swamis. And that is why Swamini is so happy 
to reveal her inner feelings to them. She already knows that they know, they feel her. Isn't it? We are all looking for these souls who feel us. And why? Because many things we have to hide, many things we don't express. But if there's someone you know that they feel you, oh my God, then you can go deep. And Swamini is so happy to reveal her inner feelings to them. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was revealing more and more, and not even maybe necessarily by words. But this is what you always say, Guru, if it's a local call now. These transfers, they go heart.com to heart.com. As the teacher is, so the pupil. Tulasi learned how beautiful it is to learn this poetry from her and to recite it. Thank you, our dear Radhacharan. He opened your mouth, Gurdi. <laughs> Jai Ho. <laughs> My God. How beautiful it is to learn this poetry from her and to recite it. I am your maidservant and you will mold me with your own hands. That is so beautiful. It's not only that I'm your maidservant, I want to follow you, but no, you will make me like you want. I remember that song, Gurudev, uh, of our Guru, um, the Guru, Guru Vandanas. There is one part also, Gurudev Kripa Koroke, that it's saying that, make me like you. And then I always thought, why is it so important to, to be like you? Okay, you are a realized person, but this is deeper even. It's not only about the knowledge like uh, Gauravani said, not about the gyan, not about uh, repeating something like a parrot. It's about the feelings that go from heart to heart. And then sometimes we want to be molded. When we come to Vrindavan, to you, Gurudev, we also pray that you mold me. Mold me, Gurudev. Mark me, please. <laughs> <laughs> we want this. We need this. We don't come there for tourism. We don't come there for just, uh, you know, having fun, which we always have a lot of fun. It is inclusive and festivals. But first of all, and most important, I want to be molded. I want that you take my heart and you give these impressions. Like Rupa Goswami got them from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. These hearts were molded. They were shaped in just exactly the way so they would be, you know, fit for the most sweetest services to Shrimati Radhika and her beloved Moha. Mold me with your own hands. And then what happens? She is well educated in the sciences that Sri Mati has taught her. And she will become expert in Rasika services. Being molded means to be trained for these services. We need to be shown how it, you know, how Sri Mati Radhika feels how she wants services and how she will uh, express through her maidservant to her Mohan. And that's why in the beginning uh, she says, um, the maidservants know innumerable arts through the training of their Ishwari, their Sri Ishwari. 
and Swamini molds Tulasi as she wants it. And that is not something like brainwashing. It's not something artificial. It is some loving uh, intimacy. And it's called pranai. That is that oneness that two persons, they feel the same thing. They feel like they are one body. There is no shyness. There is just that uh, feeling of making Swamini happy by all the services that she wants this maidservant to perform in her Swarup, in her transcendental senses, in the service of Swamini, in the service of Mohan. So perfect. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe. I'm I'm sorry to disturb, but Gurudev oh, cannot be heard. I cannot hear him. I saw that he was speaking something and he made something like Jai or... But I could not hear it. Maybe the microphone, this black one, is not on. Love it. Ah, yes, yeah. you are now there. I can... <laughs> Thank you very much, Gurudev. Please so give, give us some feelings. Sharing is the beautiful subject, which comes from the feelings, and that increases the rasa. This is the bhav, mahava. And rasa, that is Ananda. What a Marcia take and a Mahatma. That we should bat this time to receive this. I hate Peter, but what do you say? Adharia. So much. So much. Marcy at the same time. Only Chaitanya. Only Radha Chaitanya. Chaitanya means Radha. The day we become Radha Dasi, we become Chaitanya. Love makes us always Chaitanya. So many Darsis are always conscious in the service. Who is always conscious is in his sarup, they are Chaitanya Das. I have so beautiful fortune that I got all of your association. So by all of your mercy, I only want to drink from my air. Non stop. <laughs> Good. If this morning we read, every individual soul is qualified to become Radhika's maid servant. This is the great, rare gift of Sriman Mahaprabhu. Yeah. 
Shri Rata is the embodiment of Mahabhav. And here we can see how Radharani is giving her mercy in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Embracing Rupa, giving all mercy, means you are mine. Then saying, tell him everything about this confidential rasa means I am yours. Now you will know everything about me. I am yours completely. You are mine and I am yours. <laughs> Can we see it like this, Gurudev? Yeah. <laughs> Mahabhav is given by touching, coming close. We need one who has Mahabhav. We will not get by only theory. We need uh, a touch, uh, embrace of one who has Mahabhav. Then we will get Mahabhav. It's mercy. So someone who is actually giving us to Radha that she can embrace us hmm. must be very near. Mahaprabhu gave to Rupa, Rupa gave to Raghunath, Raghunath gave, and so on and so on. And Guru gave to us. It's still there. We are, we are online. It's a chain of embraces. <laughs> That's the parampara. <laughs> morning in the class Swamini Radhika is telling Oh Rupa Rati I am in your shelter you take care of me right mm. Explain that. Read this line. Swamini holds Tulasi's hand. Swamini holds Tulasi's hand. <laughs> what a sweet picture. Swamini holds Tulasi's hand and follows here. On the forest pass, fearly looking here and there and saying, Tulasi, I have no other shelter but you. <laughs> Take me with you. <laughs> <laughs> Her beautiful glance makes the forest of Vrindavan even more beautiful. Then the carefully protected inner petals of a newly opened blue lotus flower. You see, this is the meaning of this. Read again this slide. Tulasi, I have no other shelter than you. Take me with you. 
Her beautiful glances make the forest of Vrindavan even more beautiful than the carefully protected inner petals of a newly opened blue lotus flower. Swamini holds to Lassi's hand and follow her on the forest path, fearfully looking here and there and saying to Lassi, I have no other shelter but you. Take me with you. The wonderful beauty of her eyes are as if awakening a flute of beauty on the chest of the environment's natural beauty. Vamini is afraid, but Tulasi encourages her, saying, Come, come, why are you afraid? I am here with you. Vamini looks at Tulasi, who makes her fearless. She feels consoled and silently walks on. Tulasi is Swamini's shelter. Blessed is the maidservant that she can render such service. She provides shelter to Swamini who is the shelter of Govinda, who is again the shelter of the whole world. Amazing. Tulasi says, I will bring you into the hands of he who eagerly sits down, hoping to meet you. How incomparable beautiful is the heart of this maidservant. Can I say a little bit? <laughs> Yes, Jainanda. Usually it is say, like Ashraya Tattva, Guru Dev used to say Ashraya Tattva. So everybody takes shelter, Govinda, Krishna. And then Krishna takes shelter with Radhika. So even Radhika takes shelter of our Manjari. And Govinda also takes shelter Manjari. This mm. Mahaprabhu teaching us this mm. high, highest Ashraya Tattva. This is amazing. <laughs> this is really amazing. This is mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is mercy of our Gurudev and Raghunanda Goswami, Rupa Goswami. Mm. Actually, it's indescribable, this beauty, but to see when we read about it, how Swamini takes the hand of Tulsi. So we can imagine in our Swaru, we have a, this, uh, this body of a maidservant with uh, fine and um, Glida, what's that? Limbs. limbs with this with this limbs, not like in the crossbody. We have very fine limbs and 
When our hand touches Radhika's hand, how sweet is this? To see this with our inner eyes and encourage our Swamini when she is fearfully in the night. So you and mentioned, every Indu yes, sorry. Yeah, you may you say every individual soul is qualified to become Radhika's maidservant. This is the great rare gift of Sriman Mahaprabhu. It's astonishing, Gurudev. This paragraph is very astonishing. Very, no? So which verse? First, thirteen. It's a it's an explanation of uh, verse thirteen and one verse is eleven of Bilakus Mandiri. That the pastime of Radha and Krishna is the goal of mercy. Without that, we cannot, without darshan, we cannot realize anything. When this reason comes to our life, life changes. Very nicely is mentioned. You remember that day you are explaining Gaurasundha, 11 verses. But, but this in these verses, one line is, we are sleeping, blue lotus flower, patter is opening, read this. This is meaning of this, my realizations are opening. You read it? Wow. Yeah. That. Her beautiful glances make the forest of Vrindavan even more beautiful than the carefully protected inner petals inner. of a newly opened inner petal. Inner petal. Inner petal. Yeah. What protected. is covered? What is covered, it will open. Oh, yeah. And shining. <laughs> I sent you a picture, Gurudev. I don't know, don't know why. I will show you. I think it was the most beautiful picture Raghunath could find to describe this moment when he described the beauty of a uh, inner petal of a blue lotus. Look. You can see? Yes. This is a, a just open blue lotus flower. The inner petal is this yellow shining. Uh, yeah. Blue and yellow. yellow. <laughs> and it's like as if a if a if a light is inside. Yeah. In a blue. Lotus flower is covered in our person. Mm. And it opens, means our blockage is open. Mm. This inner battle, what works, read And we have three, actually, we have three colors here. We have a golden shining, a blue. 
what is covering this yellow. But when the yellow, when the blue is opening the petals, then this yellow is shining. Yeah. And outside we have green, you see? Green, blue, yellow, golden. Wow. All is so there. This is the line, read now. <laughs> A beautiful cleanse, make the forest of Vrindavan even more beautiful than the carefully protected inner petal. Is it Krishna who protects this inner petal, Gurudev? Her beautiful glances makes the forest of Vrindavan even more beautiful than the carefully protected inner petals of a newly opened blue lotus flower. It's a blue lotus flower. <laughs> the wonderful beauty of her eyes are as if awakening a flood of beauty. Wow. What? The wonderful beauty of her eyes flood. are as if awakening a flood. We say in German a flood. 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 Mm. Of beauty, a flood of beauty. On the chest of the environment's natural beauty. This is poetry, no? Barbara, please check your mic. Yeah. Such a nice explanation, Gurudev. Thank you for this. What is the meaning of this that opened it? No? Yeah. Thank you for sharing and caring and uplifting us and molding us, Gordon. Thank you, Jayananda. So long ago I saw you. Yeah. Thank you. Missing Thank you. you. I miss you also. You come in September? Yes, yes, I'm coming. Ah, Jayo. So when I'm we meet just, again. You know, yeah, anyway. So, okay. Huh? Mm -hmm. So, who, whoever, whatever contact with Swamini, who is Mahababa, become Mahababa. Mm. And this is like our Guru Parampara. 
to become not get because Swamini is Mahabha and the maid servants have Mahabha. Yes. Only go for Indavan and make hug to Gurudev. That's yes. enough. <laughs> yes, that is important. <laughs> 